Greetings! Today um, I will be making a loud laptop quiet again. So uh, this, this is the subject, it's a Sony Vio, nothing special. It's a Core i3 laptop thing for those interested. It's a model uh, PCG71311M and it's, uh, it's not the best powerhouse but it's good enough for browsing internet and doing lots of other stuff to be honest so um, I want to keep using it but the problem with it is uh, it gets um, really really loud and that's a common problem with a lot of the old uh, a lot of the laptops that have been ser in, in service for over two years or maybe less um, and most often uh, the there is two causes for that sort of problem. One, the heat sinks, um, the radiators are getting clogged up with dust that depends on the environment that the laptop was in. And also the thermal paste uh, simply dries out and um, the thermal conductivity of the paste uh, gets really high and it doesn't work as well. Therefore, uh, the processor and the chipset are getting really hot and that causes the fans to go on full blast and uh, that's not necessary to be honest um, so it's a fairly simple um, fairly simple job to do um, so I'm, I'm I thought I'm gonna share it with with you guys on what to do in case you want to do it yourself um, should be straightforward so um, the tools I will be needing for this uh, well apart from the laptop itself um, this is optional, uh, but uh, it's just a magnet from a uh, fan motor. Just a place to keep all the screws that you take out. Uh, with a weak magnet like that, it's actually really handy. You can just drop them in and they hold in place. Um, we're going to need the thermal uh, grease, thermal paste, um, whatever you want to call this. And this one is the silver stuff um, that we've tested, or they have tested in previous video and this turned out to be the best one out of the lot that I was using including the uh, copper grease that's the one um, so this um, you'll need a little stick uh, something to spread the paste on um, conveniently because uh, if you put it on your finger it gets really messy really quickly and a set of screwdrivers something that's suitable for the task uh, this should do it uh, so let's begin. To get it started, um, remove what's obvious. So remove the batteries. Usually at the bottom of a laptop, you've got two, um, two one or two flaps. Um, they would ho uh, house memory and the hard drive. Sometimes on some laptops that's not present, but if it is, uh, take that out first. And here is the hard drive flap open. In this, in case of this laptop, um, the flap was held by two screws and there's two more screws holding the hard drive cage in place and if I take that out or take the screws out I'll be able to remove the laptop hard drive by simply sliding it away from the connector like so and then lift it up by the flap and that's the hard drive out and that's a 320 gig hard drive so we'll keep that safe for the time of operation. Next step will be to remove pretty much all the screws uh, that are in in view inside. And just make sure to keep all the screws safely for uh, for the assembly part. And also pay attention to the length of the screws and the, the shape, size of them and whatnot. It might be that in different parts of the laptop the screws are different, so if you don't use the correct screws in the right place later on that might cause you some problems. And that's all done. I've had three types of screws. I had 11 of those which were pretty much all over the place. Two of those uh, really short ones, like so, um, those are the two over here in the battery and two thicker ones that were in the corners where the display mounts are. The case should kind of lift off and depending on how your laptop is made sometimes the top will come off, sometimes the bottom but I think I'm quite sure it's the bottom in on this laptop. There will be some more clips holding it somewhere.
Ah, there's one more screw. Okay, 12 little screws. There we go. And we are in. Uh, first of all, check for any uh, any moving parts like this uh, CD-ROM drive that simply slides out and um, it's always a good practice to remove it for the time of operation because if you move your laptop and that fell out it might get damaged or whatnot. So I'll take that out. Uh, if anyone's interested, it's a HL Data Storage Super Multi DVD Rewriter. Okay. This is the whole motherboard, this is where everything's happening. And um, overlooking at this, we've got here is the Wi Fi module. You can see Wi Fi and Bluetooth, probably both of them. You can see two little coax cables snaking out here to antenna. And um, we've got more, the RAM modules here. Here is the power supply section that give away big inductors. The main processor here, the chipset and the heatsink and the problem with the noise is in those two places this one we're going to change the heatsink uh, tape the compound uh, apply some fresh one we're going to clean it and apply some fresh one on there and here the the fan blades we're, as we're going to take it out uh, i'm going to try to clean it up with a brush so it looks nice so you can see let me lift it up so you can see closer but this is really really dirty and dusty in there so all that dust actually stuck onto the fins of the fan creates more turbulence and makes it a lot more noisier so by sometimes often by taking away all the all the dust you can improve the noise or well, reduce the noise uh, made by the laptop so let's uh, let's remove this and to remove this first of all see if there's anything in the way I can see over here I've got cables coming from the monitor, so that's backlight and um, signal cables coming here. They are kind of in a way, but maybe not, we'll see. Um, I've got one screw over here for the, um, for the fan and the heat pipe. So maybe let's remove that. It will help if I take the correct screwdriver. There we go. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else. This one as well is holding it. There's the connector. Let's get this unplugged gently. There we go. And yes, that's already loose. So um, now those four screws should be allow us to remove the heatsink from from the processor and those screws are a little bit tighter but okay let's try to gently lift do not apply excessive force here okay nothing holding this is quite uh, quite a bit stuck so let me have a look on the other side no nope, that has to come out Okay, it seems the heatsink compound's quite a bit stuck on there, so let's try spudger. Oh, okay, and that's come out. And this thermal compound is, well, it's completely th solid. Oh, sorry, I'm off camera. And um, I've got a little bit of tape stuck on here, so. Let me remove or unglue it, untape it. Gently, there we go. We'll tape that back on afterwards. And yeah, this is all dusty. So we'll clean that, but have a look at this compound. I mean, this is, this is solid. So yeah, oops. Yeah, you can see this is uh, this hasn't got any th good thermal properties anymore. So let's clean this off. Well, to clean it off of the heatsink, I'm just going to use a blade because it will be easy and quick. 
And what I'm going to use over here is a little bit of sandpaper. This is 400 grit sandpaper with a tiny piece of uh, wood that I'll use uh, as a sanding block. And very gently, by wrapping it up like so, I'll be able to get down to bare metal of the copper to make it all shiny again. That will help the thermal transfer. There you go, that's all nice and shiny. You can see the color difference between uh, when it's polished and the oxidized copper over here. Um, the copper oxide will always have worse uh, properties than, um, than the actual uh, bare copper, so yeah, it's always a good idea to give it a little bit of polish with the sandpaper. Let's take the cover of the fan. Oh yeah, I'm glad we did. Okay, let's try to peel that off gently, or maybe let's keep it. Uh, let's peel it. Okay, when you've got a large uh, piece of sticky tape like that and you want to preserve it, now, it's, it's really difficult when you're cleaning stuff and because and, everything will get stuck to it. But an easy way to get it preserved is get some paper like, uh, like the kind that you get on a double-sided tape. And if I just get a small section like so, I'm going to discard the tape itself because I won't be needing it for this purpose but you see it's got really uh, really smooth surface it's a wax paper or some kind but basically uh, nothing will permanently stick to it or at least the, the tape shouldn't and you'll be able to easily peel that off but it will get protected for the time being while you're doing your cleaning and over here you see the amount of dust that was blocking. There was basically no airflow over here whatsoever. So with a toothbrush that comes out nicely. There we go, that's all clean. You can should be able to tell the difference from what it was before. And the blades. Okay and a little bit of uh, rubbing afterwards. You can see this is Just like new. Okay, I've tidied up the mess and it's back to the laptop. Um, I can see there's a little bit of dust over here, so if I just brush it off. The processor, and this is going to be the tricky part. We need to be really gentle over here and in removing the existing compound. I can see some of it is coming up with just a finger touch. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's try alcohol pad. Those are uh, just uh, medical alcohol pads things. Um, they work quite well actually for cleaning a lot of the stuff. So, and they're cheap as well. So I usually keep a box handy. Yeah, that seems to be going. Super shiny. It's a Intel i three three fifty M. And there will be always uh, a leftover of old thermal compound around the thing. Don't worry about it. That actually makes no difference whatsoever. And you, and you might actually run into more risks of damaging the chip uh, by trying to scrape that off and remove it what, or whatnot. So uh, it's best, uh, best actually left alone. I've still got this. I'm going to grab another alcohol pad and clean this surface off just in case we left any grease on there and whatnot so we've got two perfectly clean surfaces now our thermal compound let's apply very even it's good enough um, certainly better than what it was but now it's time to stick this back in and the way to stick it is to place it 
back where it should be. There we go, that's sitting and now we can just drop this and apply a tiny bit of pressure. Now don't apply too much pressure on here. Um, we've actually got the screws to deal with that so reassemble the screws on the heatsink at first very gently don't screw them all the way in and do it diagonally first okay and then going all the way around tighten tighten them up one by one and the spring in the heatsink will actually do the job of applying applying itself evenly to the rest of it there's just enough pressure in this always remember to plug your fan back in because your otherwise your laptop will get too quiet and might not last very long now when putting a laptop together um, it's a tip for you that always make sure that it clips in really nicely all the way before you start putting any screws in uh, because it should fit really snugly back into uh, perfectly into into place if something doesn't fit it's an indication that maybe you caught on to some sort of cable inside or or something's not right so take it out look at it again and make sure it all fits very very snugly and yeah there, there shouldn't be any force required to put it back in let's see if it will come back on success now I haven't got any screws left so that's a good sign and the laptop switching on that's a good sign as well I'm quite sure I can already hear it's relatively a lot more quiet like that it's barely humming um, before it was uh, almost uh, seemed like it was gonna take off so yeah this is how you make a loud laptop quiet again thank you very much for watching uh, if you've got a loud laptop go ahead and make it quiet it's really cheap and easy to do as long as you know what you're doing so thanks again for watching subscribe for more random stuff give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and for the time being take care